problem and complaints from the residents became much more widespread after the winter of 1977. It was the precipitation event, the blizzard of 77, that actually overfilled the, the canal, the, the bathtub effect, with all of the, the, the winter snow, et cetera, and the, uh, the actual wet season that we had in 1977 after this blizzard. We had an early spring, an early thaw, and all the water was forced underneath the canal from this clay pit, basically, to the top, and it started oozing out of the top of the canal. In the late 1970s, there were no conclusive answers about the health risks and long-term effects of exposure to toxic wastes. Nobody was really sure what wastes were in the canal, but deadly dioxin was identified. The Environmental Protection Agency had been formed just a few years earlier and had not dealt with a public crisis like this before. The residents' fear turned to frustration and anger. The Love Canal became the focus of the growing environmental movement and was soon national news. On August 7, 1978, then President Jimmy Carter declared Love Canal a disaster area and those living nearest to the dump site were relocated. Right after the first relocation in August of 1978, they erected a 10-foot fence, a green fence, so it would be environmentally pleasant. Um, around Love Canal, and then they put signs on the fence that said, hazardous area, dangerous, do not enter. Infrared pictures were taken from the air to track the spread of the contaminants. Gray or black in the photos revealed the presence of the chemical waste. After another two years of activism by Lois Gibbs and other residents, a second presidential declaration cleared the way for another 500 families to be relocated. Except for a few families who refused to move, Love Canal became a ghost town. Continuing studies revealed the contents of the canal. There were over 400 chemicals found in the leachate from the Love Canal landfill, from lead and arsenic to lindane, variety of other pesticides to solvents such as uh, benzene, toluene, xylene, host of others. Uh, many of these chemicals cause cancer. Some of them, or many of them cause liver problems, liver disease. Many of them cause central nervous system problems. Some cause birth defects. Over the next few years, extensive efforts were made to clean up the neighborhood. We cleaned 65,000 linear feet of uh, storm sewers around that entire area. And of course, the hazardous waste byproducts did find their way underground to a, uh, a nearby set of creeks, the Black and Burkholz Creeks that flow just north of Love Canal. We ended up testing the creek sediment and discovering that the same hazardous waste byproducts that were buried now have worked their way via water under the ground to the creek areas. Uh, one of the remedies were uh, to actually dredge the creek. Crews dealing with the toxic dump itself decided that trying to remove, transport, and store the chemicals somewhere else was inviting further disaster. The chemicals were going to have to stay where they were, and a better cover and containment system put in place. The 99th Street School and 239 homes were demolished and placed on top of the canal, and then covered with clay. And over the top of it, we placed this synthetic liner. And this synthetic liner went directly over the entire 40-acre area, OK? And then after we placed the synthetic liner, we then installed this plastic liner. This liner goes over the entire 40-acre area. So when it rains, all of the, uh, the precipitation will go through the ground and will actually hit the top of this liner, much like an umbrella. It will run off of it. The runoff is then collected in an underground barrier drain system. It's then pumped up to the facility at the top of the Love Canal, where it's treated by carbon filters. It is then discharged via storm sewer to the city of Niagara Falls' wastewater treatment plant, where it undergoes uh, uh, more filtration before clean water is discharged into the upper Niagara River. The capping and drainage system handles the material so well that anything that gets through is minimal and we have a, a series of 
over 200 monitoring wells in the entire neighborhood to make sure that the groundwater uh, is not being impacted by any of the contamination. It's been more than a quarter of a century since the Love Canal first became a notorious environmental disaster. New residents have been moving into the area, but many of those who lived there previously will never consider it safe. This is the earth. The earth shifts. And we saw what happened in the blizzard of 77 when we had the snow melt and the, the river rose and, and that, they believe, created a lot of the Love Canal problem. It's foolish to think that they can contain it. The crisis at Love Canal created greater awareness of America's growing problem with industrial wastes. It was also primarily responsible for the creation of a federal program called Superfund. Since its inception in 1980, Superfund has spent more than $16 billion cleaning up over 2,000 hazardous waste sites around the United States, including the infamous Love.